All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane. This is the Coding Zoo channel. Our goal at Coding Zoo is to help others learn how to program. So in today's video, we're going to continue our series on SQL, learning SQL on the Postgres SQL database. We're going to learn how to use the SQL statement for selecting data from a table. We're going to learn the basics of using the select statement to access data in a single table. If that interests you, stick around. We're gonna jump right in. All right, hey, so let's go ahead and get started. In my previous videos, we created a database. We inserted a table and inserted data in that table in the database. If you want to see that, I'll put a link up to that above now we're going to look at how to actually select data from that table select data from the table now you may have seen the previous videos where we did a simple select statement like this s l e c t i'm going to use asterisk to mean all columns from my table name in this case my table name is orders and semicolon so select all from orders orders is my table name there we go. So you'll see it gave me the data that's in that table. Here's the order ID column. Here's the created by column. And here's the order date. You'll see I have two rows in that table. Shane Crouch and Nick Crouch, right? So I was able to select all the rows from that table orders. Now imagine this table was had a million records in it and you're looking for certain data. You're looking for the record uh, that has Shane in it, right? So you can see when that order was created, right? So your order ID is two. Well, how would you do that? Would you select all of the records, the million records, and then go through it and find the one that has the order ID of two? No, you would select just that order ID of two from the table to get the rest of the information for that record, for that row. So how would you do that? Well, you do that using a WHERE clause. So let's go over that. So select all from the table orders and i'm going to use the keyword where now where what well i want to specify a certain criteria right so order id so order id is equal to what let's say i want to select the record that has the nicks data nicks order so order id equals three put my semicolon so I have select all columns with the asterisk from the table order where the column order ID is equal to three. Somebody's driving a motorcycle. Sorry for that noise, folks, if you heard that. Um, so select all from order where order ID equals three. So your where clause lets you specify exactly what criteria you want to specify. You could do other things than equal. You could say greater than or less than, and you can, you can actually build a large criteria. You could say where order ID equals three or order ID equals two. You could just build upon that. So it can be quite complex in the criteria you specify. To keep it simple, we're just going to say where order ID equals three. Kind of give you an idea of what you can do, right? So press enter. And I made a mistake. Got a bug. Do you see my bug? I see it. So I'm going to go back. My table is not called order. Order is singular. You should never name your table singular. You should name it plural. Select all from orders. Let's do that again. Press enter. There we go. So instead of finding all the records, it just found the records with the primary key of three. The order ID column is a primary key. I specified that when I created the table. And again, you can see that in my previous videos. So I did a select where order ID is equal to three, and it found the record I needed. Now, if we want to do something more complex, can we do more? Let's say, see, select all from orders where order ID is equal to three. And let's say, hmm, is and the keyword in Postgres SQL? Let's try it out and see. I haven't used Postgres SQL in a while. Let's see. And uh, let's not do and because you can't have both. It can't be three or and two. So let's do uh, or equals two. And let's put a semicolon. And there we go. So you can you can build your where clause to have multiple criteria, right? How about select all from orders where 
order ID is greater than two. Don't forget your semicolon. Boom, it found NIG, right? So again, you can you can build your, your where clause to be quite complex. So you have the select, and we've been doing all using the asterisk. Select all, basically, asterisk means all, all your columns. Now, what if I didn't want all the columns to come back when I select it? Let's say this table had 20 columns. I only wanted two columns. Let's say I only wanted to create it by and the order date. How would I do that? Well, I wouldn't specify the asterisk for all, I would specify the column names. So I'd do created by, and I would do order date. And then I would do from, and again, my table names. And let's say I want to find the order with the, that has an order ID of three. Order ID equal three, in my semicolon. So I have select, and then the two columns I want to select from the table, from the table orders, where my order ID equals three. And there you go. You'll notice that it doesn't have all three columns, like up here. It only has these two columns. So you can actually specify exactly which columns you want. So as you select data, you can specify exactly which columns you want. Sometimes you might want all of them. Sometimes you only want a certain amount of data. And why would that matter? Well, you know, if you could be getting hundreds of records bringing it across the wire in your program, bringing it across the network, right? When you're programming against this in whatever programming language you're using, right? So if there's if there's 20 columns and let's say you're going to bring back you know tons and tons of records say thousands and thousands of records with your query and you only need like two columns out of you know 20 columns well that data adds up it takes longer for that data to get across the wire so that's why sometimes it's necessary necessary to be more exact instead of saying hey give me all you usually just want to for for optimization you usually want to specify exactly what you want when you're programming in a programming language accessing a database across the network. You usually want to specify exactly what you want, and that increases your performance. So that's just something to keep in mind. So you have your select all, you have your select where you can specify which columns, and you can use a where clause to narrow down to exactly what you want. Now, can I do a select on another column that's not the primary key, right? So select all from orders where, let's see, created by, is equal to Nick Crouch. So can I select on columns that aren't my primary key? Let's see if that will work. All right, there you go. So that works. I don't have to use my primary key in the select statement. I can specify other columns. Now, one thing to keep note of, when you're creating your tables, you want to consider what kind of queries, what kind of columns you're going to use in your where clause. When you create your tables, the database will build indexes. The indexes are a way for the database to look up your records quickly using your where clause. If your where clause is using a column like created by that just so happened doesn't to have an index on it, then if there was thousands and thousands, millions of records in this table, that query would have taken forever. Ever. It would have done a full table scan. It would have it would have looked at every single record in the database, right? So you have to be careful what columns you specify in your where clause. If you're going to use a specific column, then put an index on that column. So by default, a primary key column has an index on it. it usually has a clustered index on it. We won't go into details on that right now. But as you're creating your table, that's more advanced table creation. You want to consider what columns you're going to be selecting on the most. And then you want to specify indexes on those table on those columns as you create the table. So that's just something to consider as you do queries, as you do select statements, right? You want to consider what you're putting in your where clause and performance and whether those columns have indexes on them. And you can always add indexes to those columns later if you need to, right? So this is your basic, simple select statement. I hope I didn't go too far into the indexes. I don't want to make it too complicated for you right now. But this is your simple select statement. You can specify all or your specific columns. You can specify from what table. And you can specify um, exactly with a where clause which data you want to get back. So pretty neat. Now, there is a way to do selection across tables where you can select from not just from one table, but multiple tables. And we'll get into those complex SQL statements in future videos.
Hey, so that's it for today. In our next video, we're probably going to go over how to update a record in the database. We have did an insert in a database in our previous video. We did selects today. We're going to do updates next, and we may end up doing deletes after that. And then we'll kind of get into more complex things like uh, a SQL uh, query that does cross tables. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a message below. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, click that like button. That really, really helps us get the word out and allows this video to go to others to help them. So please click that like button. We appreciate it. If you'd like to see more of our videos, click subscribe, click the bell icon. If you click the subscribe and the bell icon, it'll let you know when our next videos come out. So, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you again next time. Bye.